yeah, I'm not sure that you'll have enough uh, card space for recording all this, uh, but Jacqueline was a lively little girl, and uh, she was born to us in Chicago, and she was always moving, always doing something, asking questions, um, Very jabbering Very everywhere. Happy. Loved to climb up on you, loved to cuddle up with you. From being a really happy little girl with a lot of lively, she um, was diagnosed with some seizures during the beginning of her fourth year, age four. And it was right about that time when um, I noticed that uh, Jacqueline was really pale. And one particular night I noticed that she couldn't run. And that next day we were at a clinic and we were doing some blood work and I just asked them to run Jacqueline's blood, um, her hemoglobin. They were sticking fingers of our other children and um, her hemoglobin was extremely low to the point where they were wanting us to go straight to the emergency room. You know, as a parent, you really just really hope that they're going to get better. And they were using really bad words like leukemia and several other blood diseases that were even worse than that. In December, when they diagnosed her with leukemia, it was actually a really big relief when that phone call came. We didn't even really know all that it, that was, but that was better than the other diagnoses that they were going to give. We said hallelujah when that came in, and they're like, what's wrong with you people? We're like, at least we know what's wrong. So what I've been told is chemo treatments took two and a half years. It was in those moments I realized that not only did I need Jesus to save me physically and, you know, be the good doctor that I'd been told by my parents that he was, but I really needed him to save me spiritually too. So that's, I would say, the moment when I decided that I needed him to be the savior of my life. Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest uh, question that we deal with as human beings is why does sickness come to people? Why do bad things happen to good people? That's the million dollar question. But ultimately, God was working out a plan where he could put us exactly where we needed to be. We could trust in him. We could see his faithfulness, that he's consistent in his character, that his name really does matter. So when I was seven and a half, they officially put us in remission. Even though the cancer had been gone for a while, that's when the treatment had officially been done. And they said, like, at this point, we're going to keep an eye on you, but you're in the clear. Well, I think that this illness has really shaped Jacqueline. She loves people. She loves the Lord. She loves God's Word, but she really loves people. And I've, I've learned that from her. I am really thankful for how God uh, has just enabled her to love people, and because of that, we're different. So not only has He redeemed her life physically from the sickness, but He's redeemed her life spiritually, and we give God credit and glory for all that He's done in her life. In full confidence, I can tell you that our God is a healer, and I know that nothing is impossible with Him or outside of His control. And the Lord is our healer. Sometimes He doesn't always heal like we'd like Him to. And going through this illness with Jacqueline, we saw many families that did not have the good news that we had. Many children, when we go through those cycles of treatment, they wouldn't come back because they did not survive. As believers in Jesus Christ, we have hope that He will completely heal us. The moment we leave this earth, the moment we breathe our last breath, He promises that we will be completely healed and we will live with Him forever with a new body, fully restored just as He created us to be. So ultimately, He is the healer.